All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. Okay, so today we are checking out a video about the German KSK. Now, we've checked out a lot of videos about the KSK previously, so I don't want to hit them up too much because I know I've been reacting to them a lot, but there's just a lot of really cool videos about the KSK out there. Now, there's a series that was produced about the KSK. I'm not sure if I've reacted to any of the videos in that series yet, but this video that we're going to check out today is part of that series, and it's all about sort of CQB. I think it's like a hostage rescue sort of scenario, but it looks really freaking cool, and I wanted to check it out. Uh, again, if there's any new videos about the KSK that come out that are just really sick, of course, I'll check them out, but this is probably going to be one of the last videos I'll, I'll do for the KSK, just so I can focus on some other countries and some other units, because, I mean, yeah, it's always fun checking out the KSK, but it is always cool checking out newer units, too. So, this one looks good. I think you guys are going to enjoy it, so let's do it. It's also got the auto translate. In dem Fall gibt es einen entsprechenden Hinweis, dass die Tätergruppierung die Nerven verliert und beginnt Geiseln zu misshandeln und diese gegebenenfalls sogar töten will. Okay, so I think what he's saying is they want to use the nighttime because it's more advantageous for them because it's going to be more stressful for the people who are actually taking the hostages. So we can kind of see some of the scenario already. It looks like. This dude's kind of holed up in a in a kid's room. And then, oh man. So already the footage looks really cool because we can see like the sick gear and the quad nods. So I'm excited. I'm excited for this one. It's going to be really sick. The gear alone is going to be sick. The Geiselbefreiung is also in vollem Gange and kämpfen jetzt von Raum zu Raum, um die Geiseln schnellstmöglich zu befreien. Just casually like announcing everything while they're throwing flashbangs and stuff. Yeah, this is a really good series though. I'll put the original video in the description. And the six shots with the night vision lighting up their eyes and whatnot. Interesting editing. All right. I'm liking the build up too. Letzten Vorbereitung. Da hinten ist schon das Zielobjekt. So, aber was passiert jetzt gleich? Was kommt auf uns zu? Okay, den ersten. So I know they need to probably wear these to protect their identities and whatnot, but man, that looks so frustrating. Especially the, the guy who needs prescription glasses. But yeah, wearing anything, like any sort of eye protection with a, a balaclava, especially when you have like helmet on, just retains all that heat. And all of it just escapes right to where your glasses are. And yeah, they get fogged up super quick. So really, somebody needs to invent some really good anti-fog stuff for the glasses. Because I've tried all the little home remedies, and they never really work too well. Phase, die Scharfschützen jetzt gerade bei der Infiltration. Nice. All right, snipers are in placing then. So we sometimes use the snipers to initiate. Gibt es einen entsprechenden Hinweis, dass die Tätergruppierung die Nerven verliert und äh, beginnt äh, Geiseln zu misshandeln und diese gegebenenfalls sogar töten will. Dadurch okay. werden dann die Assault-Kräfte in Marsch gesetzt. Da hinten ist schon das Ziel. Soul Force. Und äh, <lacht> die Kommandos werden gleich mit Hubschraubern anrücken. Alright. Hell yeah, here we go. So I wonder how far they're, they're infiltrating. anlanden. Und so schnell wie möglich das Objekt, was vor uns liegt, dann gewinnen. I love the thermals, man. The thermals make everything look cooler too. Vermutlich äh, werden die Kameraden dann eine geeignete Ladung finden, um äh, die Eindringstelle äh, zu überwinden, äh, um dann die Geiseln zu befreien. So I think they're saying they basically need, need enough people to uh, like establish a foothold. And of course, if you have certain equipment to assist in that, to, you know, assist in the shock and all, then it's going to be helpful. So it looks like they might be doing an explosive breach here. So once that goes off, I mean, it's going to be the shock and all right away. And then you can establish the foothold. Once you have a good foothold inside the house, then it's super easy because you can start, you know, flowing bodies inside the, the building from that point of entry. But yeah, some houses get pretty complicated. And of course, you can get hemmed up in a hallway pretty quickly. Let's see how they do it. They definitely have the right gear. Wir werden dann sofort Geschwindigkeit aufnehmen. Wir werden direkt hinter den Männern sein. Hell yeah, here we go.
Interesting music choice. Geschwindigkeit geht hier eindeutig vor Deckung. Sie werden stressed. Yeah, pur. especially with hostages. You gotta get to those hostages quick before they start blasting. So cool. Die Geiselbefreiung ist also in vollem Gange <lacht> und kämpfen jetzt von Raum zu Raum, um die Geiseln schnellstmöglich zu befreien. Nice ballistic shield. Die Irritationskörper haben hier. Okay, so, yeah, let's try and see some of these tactics going on. So, that ballistic shield looked pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it looks like something you might see like a, a Knights Templar holding during the medieval times. So, yeah, it looks like. So he might have been part of the initial footholds, which is why they're kind of pushing him to the back now. It's nice to get the shield in there early or, you know, if you come across like a long danger area, like a hallway or what have you, it's nice to have a shield. But it looks like once they're going to the stairs, shields can get kind of clumsy and they become more detrimental than they are, you know, as far as protection for the, for the operator itself. So now they're... This is kind of interesting. This is kind of cool though that they're actually like taking the attention detail to just rip away everything because you, you never know. People can hide in some pretty weird areas. And this is where thermals come into play. If you have some thermals and you can sweep like the walls, you could find like false walls or you can see if there's like, you know, maybe somebody hiding behind a, a curtain or something like that. So. Die Irritation yeah, and then he was covering hier, down on that. Die Aufgabe, den Feind abzulenken, sich selber einen psychologischen Vorteil zu verschaffen uh, und dann schnellstmöglich den Feind bekämpfen zu können, während dieser abgelenkt <laughs> okay. ist. Okay, I kind of understood that. Nice. Good flashbang. That laser is sick too. Oh, he's got the shield on his back. Man, he's just taking it too. Okay, nice, nice. Mm. All right, so let's break that down a little bit more because that was kind of interesting. And again, it happened very quickly. All right, so they're on a door. Let's see, so they're about to make entry into this door. Uh, it depends, I think the door opens away, like kind of like this. So if that's the case, you could maybe have somebody over here to open the door for these guys. But since there's a door jam, it makes it kind of awkward, so. It might just be easier for for him to just kick it open like like we kind of see here but yeah of course it's not ideal because now you can see he's kind of putting his weapon up but yeah i guess these are the hostages here and hey you never know the bang is going to go in anyway <laughs> you can see they were kind of prepping for it they knew it was going to happen but the bang goes in and then i'm curious so he actually goes for the for the actual door check first which is kind of an interesting move I mean, if you see hostages here, more than likely there's not going to be a dude in the corner. They probably have all the hostages in the corner. So I guess there's a, a kind of a safe assumption that there's not going to be a bad guy in this corner. So I'm thinking that's why he went for the door check as opposed to clearing out this corner 100% because, yeah, there might have been a bad guy who was rethinking his life and he was trying to hide behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, they may be hostages, but you never know. Like in the Iranian embassy siege, dudes hiding in the hostages. Alright. Die Kameraden sind alle mit dem Funk miteinander verbunden und so hat gerade die Meldung, dass alle vier Geiseln gefunden wurden, die Runde gemacht. That's a nice little shoot house, so I gotta say, the whole compound looked pretty sweet. Darüber hinaus haben wir jetzt die Situation, dass der Führer vor Ort. Okay, so also for more like behind the scenes of what would happen here. So after you clear out an, an enclosure, or even while you're still clearing it out, you can establish certain areas to either put uh, you know, prisoners of war 
or maybe people who still need to get like checked or what have you. So you can do like a hasty check, but you still want to move them to an area to get, you know, more comprehensive checks. If there's any hostages, any unknowns, like someone that was just chilling inside the room, you want to make sure you separate all these people either in different rooms or a room big enough where you can sort of separate it in different piles. And then you need to have somebody who's like a marshalling area sort of control officer. And that dude will usually set up in the first room that you clear or one of the first rooms that you clear because you know it's probably going to be clear. There's probably a lot of support personnel hanging around it already. And the rooms around it are going to be clear more than likely. So you're going to set that, that up and then you're going to have the different piles or you can have different rooms to put the hostages, put the unknowns, Put even like, you know, wounded or casualties or, you know, the, the dead enemy, you can put them in certain piles just to start separating everything and get more control of the building so it's a little bit easier and you don't have random people kind of walking all over the place. Entschieden hat, dass die Luftfahrzeuge sofort uh, wieder anfliegen sollen, um die Kameraden inklusive der Geiseln uh, aus dem Objekt zu verbringen. All right, so then they're gonna, they're gonna exfil with the helo. Okay, I don't know if they put that on him, but I'm guessing it's just so he doesn't get like shot in the face by uh, the training rounds. Also, sie haben die Täter, die Tangos gefasst. Die werden jetzt äh, erst natürlich taktisch wieder befragt. <laughs> die Tangos. Und dann findet gleich eine Evakuierung <laughs> statt. Ich vermute über die Hubschrauber. That's funny. We, we, we call them Tangos too. Like, Sniper X and Sniper. Specifically, when you would like um, do a dead check on somebody that you shot, you'd say Tango down, which you know I thought was something that you just saw in Call of Duty, but that is actual verbiage that we were using as well. So I gotta say, their equipment is really, really cool. So they're using the training rounds, like the paint rounds, simunition. Now again, I can't speak enough about the simunitions that they're using. It is awesome for force on force because, I mean, you can use blanks and that's cool, but you'll never really know when you're getting lit up. Now these simunition rounds are not going to be as loud or as violent as you actually taking fire from you know live rounds, but it does give you a good appreciation that, yeah, there are things that are potentially going to hit me and I'm aware of that. And you also need to be aware of where your rounds are going. You need to be aware of your round placement. Sometimes with blanks, you can get kind of complacent and just kind of not even use your sights. So it is really, it's much, much better training to actually use the simunition. But yeah, their gear looks pretty freaking sweet. I gotta say that ballistic shield is interesting. I wonder why they kind of painted it or taped it like this. Cause it looks like, oh, hey, that looks like something I, I might wanna shoot at. Maybe that's the point to kind of draw their attention away from the actual operators wearing camouflage to just aim for this, which is kind of like a weird psychological thing that I never thought of. Uh, there are certain ballistic shields with lights on them, which kind of help like blind people, especially when they have strobes on them. Those are really sick, but yeah, you can see, yeah, he's got the, the pistol and that's usually something you'll do. You could even, you could either have a shield with a window and you can kind of put your gun in front of the window and kind of use the sights like that. Or you can kind of use the shield as a barricade. Either one works, but ballistic shields might look fun but they can get very heavy very quickly, but they're an awesome thing to have, especially for a building that you haven't seen before. You're not really too sure of the layouts or if you know there's gonna be some weird danger areas where it might be more beneficial to have a shield. But yeah, awesome, awesome video. Again, I love checking out these KSK videos because the gear is fantastic. The tactics are always really good. They have the, the violence of action is going to be there with these individuals. I wouldn't say these sort of organizations breed a certain mentality, but they definitely attract a certain personality, kind of like those type A personalities, people who are like the, the motivators, the go-getters, people who are all about going into a job 100%. And these guys definitely take it seriously. And you can kind of see, I mean, their tactics are solid. They look very professional. They're disciplined. Um, they're not just kind of doing their own thing and kind of throwing their tactics and their training to the wayside whenever things actually start kicking off. So, and I'm sure these guys, a lot of these guys probably have some operational experience as well, but it looks like a lot of fun. And I gotta say these training facilities always look sick. Now, if you guys have any recommendations for any other German units, definitely throw them down below, especially stuff with helicopters. Cause that is always just a lot cooler, especially if there's fast roping involved. If there's like fast roping or repelling or CQB, I'll probably just front load that video and prioritize it just because I'm interested in that stuff. So I, I guess if you guys want to cheat the system, but if you do go to the Discord and recommend videos there, then I'll usually see it a little bit quicker or a little bit easier just because obviously that's just for recommending videos. So it makes it a little bit easier to find stuff 
that way. But I do appreciate it. I do have some other videos I want to check out on my list, but they're a little bit older. So if you guys have anything newer for the German Armed Forces, definitely recommend it down below or head over to the Discord. And of course, if you guys want merch, that link is always in the video description. If you guys want to send me some stuff as well, I do have the PO box. So you can see behind me with the patch wall, you can send me stuff and I'll put it on my, my patch wall here. And I'll try and get it so I can sort of see everything because some stuff is actually kind of behind this helmet here. So I apologize if some of your stuff is behind there, but I'll try and reorganize it at some point so you guys can see it a little bit better. But if you guys want to send me stuff, that is always really cool and I always appreciate it. And you might see it just kind of pop up in the background at some points. But thank you guys again. Thank you for supporting the channel. You guys are awesome, especially when you guys provide your sort of personal input to some of the videos that we check out because that's like some of the best sort of feedback that I can get is just getting some of that personal context to what we're actually looking at. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will see y'all in the next one.